Thanks to the internet, we've seen a massive surge in a certain breed of car enthusiasts known as fanboys. Surprisingly enough, there's a decent amount of car enthusiasts who don't even have a license, much less ever driven a car. It can be hard settling with just watching internet videos, it gets boring and stale. You want something more from your hobby. You crave interaction, and that's completely normal. So today, I'll be dedicating a video for all the car enthusiasts without a license. Also, I'll be doing this video in a story time format, so to all the enthusiasts around my age, get ready to get hit in the gut with some serious nostalgia. Racing games. Gaming has done a lot for car culture, but most importantly, given the majority of us a memorable childhood. I actually became interested in cars solely because of all the racing games I played as a kid. Of course, mere interest isn't the same as devout enthusiasm, and I didn't become a fully fledged car enthusiast until later on in my life. Regardless, I had a lot of fun playing Gran Turismo growing up. And before Forza fanboys calmed down, I grew up in a time when Forza wasn't even a thing, so it's not like I had a choice. I learned a lot of things from Gran Turismo, like what different drivetrains were and how engine placement affected cornering and so forth. Little things that most enthusiasts consider common knowledge within the car community, but let's be honest, most non-car people still don't know these things. Some of my former coworkers and friends from university had no idea that there are cars that have engines in the middle or rear as opposed to being in the front of the car. It was so cool that 6 year old me had already known this stuff for years, all thanks to the reading of the in-game info sheet of the stupid Toyota MR2 that I used that I'd always grind along the walls of Deep Forest Raceway because I couldn't follow racing lines worth a damn. When I became 8 and got around to playing Gran Turismo 3, I started to care more about the car's information and stats to the point I knew that DOHC meant dual overhead cams, and that certain manufacturers specialize in making certain engines, like Subis and their Boxers, or Mazda and their Rotaries, especially the Rotary Dorito Jesus legend itself, the 787B. Just because you can't drive a car doesn't mean you can't drive at all. Go-karting is fun for casuals and competitive racers. Sure, it's not a full-size car, but it's got a steering wheel and pedals, so it can help with the fundamentals. I drove my first go-kart when I was around 9 years old, it was during a vacation to China of all places, and I was racing my scrub lord brother and cousin who promptly crashed into the tire wall after just the second turn. It was a fun experience, and when we came back to the states, I knew I just had to have more of it. Unfortunately, go-karting was a bit too expensive for my family at the time, so I could only do it a couple times a year. Regardless, I remember being so hyped each time I raced in one. It's exactly what the silly child me craved, and getting a response of speed from the action of pushing the gas just felt so satisfying. I never got too into it, and I still couldn't follow racing lines worth a damn, but it definitely helped me retain interest in cars, despite not being able to drive one. I highly recommend you ask your parents to take you to go go-karting if you're a young enthusiast watching this. Maybe you can school your parents around the track while you're at it. Going to car shows was fun as a kid. Being surrounded by excessively loud and insanely powerful performance machines was so thrilling. It was one thing to play with cars in a game or imagine about it all day, but seeing them in person would always exceed expectations, in most cases at least. My parents never really were fans of Corvettes at Carlisle or Mustang Week, so after a while I just ended up going to classic car shows instead. It was an entirely different scene, but there was just something so humbling about being surrounded by cars made far before I was ever born. To this day, I still remember seeing an old 3 Series BMW from 1982 that had a sticker inside right on its dashboard that said, Respect your elders. And I sure as hell did from that day forth. It became hard for me not to smile when I see someone driving an old classic car with their head just barely peeking over their oversized steering wheel. They looked like they had so much fun, and the best part of it was it was an entirely different kind of fun that I had no idea existed within the car community. As I mentioned in my car enthusiast misconceptions video, the mainstream media only portrays the high speed thrill seeking mindset, but going to all types of shows as a kid made me learn about all the various subcultures within the car community. I don't know how relevant this entry is, since most arcades have long since vanished nowadays, but I'm putting this entry in anyway. And no, this isn't the same as video games, okay, maybe it kind of is, but let me explain why it's a separate entry. So most arcade games allow you to drive the car manually, and even though it's not a super authentic experience because most of them were limited to only being a 4 or 5 speed, again, not super authentic. It's thanks to those stupid boosts though that I at least learned the concept of how manual transmissions work. I couldn't rev match worth my life as a kid, but most arcade games were pretty lenient about the downshifts, so it was fun nonetheless. I know someone's about to comment, but bladed, can't the same experience be achieved by placing a racing sim and just using a wheel? Boy, do I look like I grew up with that much money. I was lucky enough to have my parents buy me Gran Turismo 2 and 3 in the first place. No way in hell they would spend like $300 on an elaborate steering wheel setup and another several hundred on those stupid racing chairs. 
The arcade already had that all set up and ready to go. And even all the quarters that I spent combined was still probably not as much as buying a setup for home. Also, it's in public, which is a different experience. Because nothing is more hype to me as a kid than having someone else sit in the opposing booth across from you and challenge you. I would school the crap out of so many teenagers because 12 year old me had finally learned how to follow the damn racing lines. Going to races. Yeah, so story time is over because I never grew up experiencing what it's like to be at an actual racing event. Despite living in Indiana, I've never been to any Indy 500 or NASCAR event of any kind. I do watch GTLM and GT3 occasionally on TV every now and then, so uh, that probably doesn't count. Either way, if you're fortunate enough to grow up in a family that avidly attends racing events, then it can be a great opportunity to just enjoy yourself. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video, and on today's episode of Just Car Guy Things is the feeling of being irrationally overjoyed when seeing a tunnel. You know what I'm talking about. Anyways, that's it for today, so thanks for watching, Blade Angel out.